Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 3 talking about static testing and have covered all the segments of this particular chapter. And today it's time for us to quickly look at some of the sample questions from this chapter to get some insights that what can be expected from static testing. Well, to begin with, of course, the very first question on your screen talking about which of the following is not a benefit of static testing. Indeed, again, uh, I told you several times, but once again, every time people see this tutorial, they could see it as an independent reminder. Whenever it comes to the word not, they're talking about something inverse and you will have three options which will be benefit of static testing and one option which will not be the benefit. So many people do not read the word not and they come back and tell me that I had more than one answer which was looking right. So I got confused and something else was picked up and I was not sure how to answer that. And I have only one return answer to that type of concern that is there was a word not. But again, you won't remember that. The reason is you never read it. So please make sure that you read every single question word by word before you come to the conclusion and pick up the options. So the question once again is which of the following is not a benefit of static testing and it is completely driven by the options. So you must look at the options carefully here. Now option A says having less expensive defect management due to ease of detecting defects later in the SDLC. Now this option sometimes can sound a very tricky thing. But second important thing is if you read every single word, of course it is less, ex less expensive as a benefit to conduct static testing, right, in the process. But at the same time, if I look into this, I would say that there is a word at the end which says later in the life cycle, right? Later is a wrong word. Always static testing is conducted early in the life cycle, not later. And that's where just one word can change around entire meaning of the statement. And many people do not read that particular word and say that, yeah, I was thinking this is one of the benefit. Of course it is. It is very less expensive to conduct early testing, but early, not later. Later is dynamic testing, right? Or even if you do static testing later after doing system testing, it does not make any sense. So have that context right in your mind and that would help you. So option A seems to be very appropriate so far but still let's cross check with other options too. Option B says fixing defects found during static testing is generally much less expensive than fixing defects found during dynamic testing. And that's totally true. Of course, you know, it's cheaper to fix defects when it comes to static testing compared to that of the dynamic testing. Option C here talks about finding coding defects that might not have been found only by performing dynamic testing. Yes, it has been taken straightforward from the syllabus and that's one of the key points as a benefit of static testing that some defects which are related to work products can be easily found by static compared to that of dynamic. And the option D is talking about detecting gaps and inconsistency in requirements as one of the example of defects. We discussed that the traceability gaps can be easily identified by static testing. In that context, B, C, D looks pretty much true and benefits of static testing and then put together the right answer here is a having less expensive defect management due to the ease of detecting defects later in the sdlc is not a benefit of static testing so let's look at the question number two and that's a very interesting question and the question says the reviews being used in your organization have the following attributes. So they have given you some characteristics of the review being conducted in your organization. And the characteristics included here in the list are, there is a role of scribe, okay, scribe is mandatory. The main purpose is to evaluate quality, which is common among many of them. The meeting is led by author of the work product, hold on. Now that's something unique. If you remember in our discussions, we told you that there are some unique points in different types of review and you need to recall them that informal review process does not have a leader at all. It just happens between two people. Walkthrough is a type of review where author leads the review, whereas technical review and inspection both are led by moderator, trained moderator. So I think that's where you should get your right answer. Again, I'm not trying to prompt you with surprises, but giving you the straight answer, the right answer straightforward, and that's where I'm making it clear. This is how you should read the options and get then in there right from each of them. 
So right here we have the meeting is led by author. But just to complete, the next point is also saying that uh, the meeting is led by author. That's point number three. That there is an individual preparation. Of course, that's true. And a review produce, review report is produced, which is totally okay. So which of the following review type is most likely to be used? An answer put together is B, walkthrough. Of course, walkthrough is one of the unique points says that meeting is led by author, but it doesn't happen in any other type of review. So the next question we have is question number three. And let's have a quickly look on this particular question as well. So which of these statement again is not a factor that contributes to successful review? So we, we are talking about the success factors. And again, in the examination, the word not will not be written bold like how I have written on my screen, right? This is just to tell you that you get used to it. But during the examination, they'll be written in the same font, not like block letters or capital letters. So it's just that it'll be only here in my sessions, but not in the examination. Let's look at quickly the option and check which one of this is not an option of success factors. Option A says participants should dedicate adequate time for the review. That's obviously true. B, splitting large work products into small parts of the uh, small, small, small parts to make the required effort less intense. That's true. We should always simplify our work, but uh, not complex it by taking all the work at a time. So simplifying and work breakdown structure is very common principles and techniques to reduce our effort and be more efficient. Next option here is option C, participants should avoid behavior that might indicate boredom, exasperation, or hostility to other participants. That means just follow the meeting etiquettes and make sure that they are still intact in terms of not distracting other people or any kind of hand symbols, body language, which may distract people uh, should not be followed. And yes, that's one of the success factors too from the participant point of view. And the last option here is failures found should be acknowledged, appreciated and handled objectively. Now that's a little tricky thing even because the option D also looks absolutely right because uh, we are talking about acknowledgement, appreciated and handled uh, objectively. That means no hurting any individual ego. You will always come across these type of questions where you will feel that none of the above is the right answer. But if you deep dive, you would find something very important in option D and that is failure. Go back to the chapter one where we discuss about a few keywords like error, mistake, bug, defect, and then failure. Remember, failure is something which is observed when you are dynamically executing a test. A tester experiences a failure when they run the application, and that is dynamic testing. And here we are talking about the success factors of the review process. Can you just imagine that one word in the queue of four options can be so different? And, you know, we just can't figure it out if we are not attentive and very, very you know, patient in reading the options. So D has a word which is tricking you around, which sometimes we don't pay attention to. So the option D says failures found should be acknowledged, appreciated, which is absolutely wrong. So put together, the right answer here is D, failures found should be acknowledged, appreciated and handled objectively is not a factor to contribute to the success of review. The reason is, the failures are not a part of static testing. We find only defects in static testing, but not failures. Failures are dynamic testing approach. So I think you have got some good idea about what are the types of questions you can expect. Some easy, some straightforward, sometime little tricky, with even one word changing the meaning of it. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.